Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself for our sins. Amen. Portion of scripture for our consideration as we continue uh, this Lenten series is recorded in John's Gospel, chapter 11. When Jesus saw Mary weeping and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? He asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? The word of the Lord. Dear beloved of our Lord Jesus, if you were to meet a Medal of Honor winner from World War II, he might not have the appearance of a warrior, at least not today. I mean, a man would be in his 90s. So he wouldn't have that appearance of a a courageous soldier. I mean, sure, he might have still that steely-eyed determination, but not the physique, not the... the appearance of what we would expect from a a medal-winning soldier. Probably be a little stooped over, wrinkled, not so muscular. What you'd expect from someone of that age. Jesus is the Son of God who went forth to the war that would change the world. But on the surface, he didn't have the appearance of a mighty warrior. He walked on this earth like everyone else. He wasn't armed to the teeth. You might say that he was a hidden warrior. The Bible makes it very clear that Jesus was just as human as as any of us. I mean, he got tired. He was hungry. He was thirsty. He grew up just like any other child. The Bible tells us that he grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. But there was one difference. Because of his unique birth, he was born without a sinful nature and therefore was sinless. Imagine what that was like growing up. He always got along perfectly with his siblings and friends. He was never disrespectful or disobedient to his parents, even when they might have been grumpy or short-tempered. He never needed to be disciplined. It was important for us that Jesus was sinless and lived a perfect life because we are not and we do not. When Jesus made that that sacrifice for us on the cross in our place, for that sacrifice to be complete and sufficient, it needed to be a perfect sacrifice. A sacrifice of someone without sin. Peter tells us that we were redeemed with the precious blood of, of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. Those words are echoed in the catechism. He redeemed me, a lost and condemned creature, purchased and won me from all sins, from death, and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy, precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death. There's never been a human being like Jesus who was without sin, who was perfectly holy, totally innocent. But you wouldn't have known it, for the most part, by just looking at Jesus I mean, he even had the same emotions we did. He he wept. He had compassion for others. He was angry when people tried to turn God's house into a market. Although, if people had been paying close attention, they might have noticed some differences. For example, when Jesus was a 12-year-old boy, his his family went to the Passover in Jerusalem. His parents found him in the temple courts, engaged in deep religious discussions with the Jewish scholars, not your ordinary 12-year-old. They got a glimpse into the hidden side of Jesus. Well, we see both Jesus' humanness and the hiddenness of his glory in this account. 
Jesus arrived at the home of his friends, Lazarus and his sisters Mary and Martha, in the village of Bethany, a couple miles from Jerusalem. Lazarus had been sick, and then he died before Jesus got there. In fact, he had been dead four days by the time Jesus got there. When Jesus saw Martha or Mary weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him, he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. Do you see Jesus' caring heart? Those were real human tears that Jesus was weeping as at the grave of his dear friend Lazarus. Jesus felt their pain. Even the people who were there to mourn with Mary and Martha, to support them in their grief, they recognized that those were real human tears flowing down Jesus' cheeks. Very human thing. And we've all been there too. I'm guessing most of us have known the pain of losing a loved one, someone close to us. Tears are it's a natural part of our emotions when, when we lose someone. Jesus' heart was just as broken as any of ours have ever been. But maybe there are other tears for us as well. Lent is a good time for us to reflect on the hurt we have caused to others because of our actions and words, or maybe because of our inactions, our failures to say a kind word. How many tears have been shed because we've hurt people by ignoring our family and friends? We've been too busy, too distracted. How many regrets do we have? Perhaps in our churches we should have a box of Kleenex alongside the hymnals. But you know, true repentance, it starts with that kind of grief over our sins. It starts with sorrow over sin. starts with reflecting and realizing the seriousness of our sins. Maybe it doesn't show itself in tears, but maybe it ought to. Now, thankfully, we have more than a box of Kleenex to dry our tears because we see some incredible power hidden beneath the surface of our hidden warrior. Those who were with Jesus and Lazarus and at the grave of Lazarus had some questions. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Now Jesus wept because of the damage sin caused in the world. I mean, death was not part of God's plan of salvation. Not, not, not part of God's original plan for creation. Death I can blame Satan and the fall into sin for that. So it's no wonder that we are fearful of death and we hate death. And I think that's just a natural thing for everybody in this world. Maybe it explains some of the, the fear and anxiety over this virus. And that was certainly true of those people at the grave of Lazarus. Perhaps they were wondering why didn't Jesus who had healed a blind man in Jerusalem recently, why wasn't he using that same power to help his friend Lazarus? See, they knew there was something different, something special about Jesus. They knew about his miracles. Martha knew even more. Earlier at the grave of Lazarus, she had confessed, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who was to come into the world. What she confessed is the truth. See, this, this Jesus is, yes, he's truly human, but he is also truly God. Think of how we learn that in the catechism. I believe 
that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord? We confess in the Apostle, in the Nicene Creed that Jesus is God from God, light from light, true God from true God, but that he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human for us and for our salvation. When he walked on this earth, Jesus set aside the full use of his divine power and glory. For the most part, he hid his glory, his divine nature. But there are times where he peeled back the veil and let it show. And this is one of those, one of those instances. Perhaps you know the way this miraculous event played out. Jesus called the dead Lazarus out of the grave. He commanded death to give up Lazarus. And Lazarus came out. Like a mighty warrior practicing his skills before an important battle, Jesus was getting ready for that final conflict with Satan only a week or so away. Satan continues to inflict damage on our world and on us. He would like nothing more than to rob us of peace, comfort, hope, heaven. And maybe during these difficult times, he has succeeded at times in robbing you of peace, security, comfort. None of us can deal with Satan on our own. None of us can handle whatever we're dealing with in life on our own. That's why God's plan is so perfect to rescue us and to give us eternal life. See that Jesus, who is truly human, is also God in human flesh. And it was that Jesus who was hanging on a cross for you and for me. And because he is God in human flesh, nailed to a cross, his sacrifice is sufficient to take away the sins of you and me and every other person who has ever walked the face of this earth. The sacrifice is complete. It is sufficient for us. Perfect man, perfect God, perfect plan. Now I know it's an understatement on my part to say that life for all of us is a little rough these days. There's a lot of fear and anxiety and, and, and we're all hurting, we're all confused in one way or another, and, and all of this, this hurt, this anxiety, this fear, it can lead to doubt. I mean, we pray that there would be an end to all of this, or at least that we, we'd know when it might end. And we start to wonder maybe if God is listening. Is he hiding? In some ways, he is hiding his peace and comfort and forgiveness under his word and sacraments, which is why his word is so important, so cherished by us, why you're taking the time to listen to this. But we still might wonder, little doubts might creep into our minds, where is God in all this chaos? The devil and his angels, they lurk, they prowl around. They're seeking to devour us, and Satan knows no end of ways to attack us. But God has a promise for you and for me. The one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. And we know Jesus is in us because he has claimed us as his children at our baptism, clothed us in his righteousness. We, co we confess with Paul I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live 
In the body I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So picture this. Jesus, true God and true man, with one arm is controlling the universe and his other arm is around you. Now, the risen Christ has chosen to hid, hide himself from our vision right now. But he has promised, I am with you always to the very end of the age. We matter to him a great deal. All you have to do is see the cross. So he is fighting for us every day. He is working all things, even the chaos and the anxieties of a world affected by a virus. He's working all those things out for our spiritual and eternal good. He takes all of our prayers and lays them before his Father. He sends his holy angels that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Jesus' tears at the grave of Lazarus show that he cares for us deeply. The cross proves it. His resurrection assures us. We are in the hands of a powerful and mighty warrior. Yes, his power is hidden. Hidden from us right now, from our, from our vision. But it is there for us. Every day. You are in the hands of a mighty warrior. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Mm-hmm.